Good morning, all of you. Good morning, uh, sir. Once again, uh, we are starting our online lecture series. Now, all of you must be aware that because of the once again increase in the COVID patients and because of that problem, we have to again follow our previous method. Okay, some of the lectures already we have conducted physically here. <coughs> and uh, we are continuing with the whatever the our uh, from the previous part okay so those students who have physically attended the lecture they are uh, well aware that uh, we are in the second unit up to the end of the second unit and uh, as already we have discussed our second unit consists of the three section in that first we have the macro and the macro preprocessor that already we have completed and only two sections are remaining and uh, from that second section we are starting today and uh, we will finish it today only so our second section consists of the loaders and the uh, different types of the loaders okay now this concept already uh, while discussing the our first unit introductory part that time also we have discussed the concept of what exactly is the uh, loader is okay now today we'll see the more details in that and also we'll see uh, what are the different types of the loader that usually uh, being utilized okay uh, in our process of execution of particular program now uh, if you see the this uh, i hope the slides are visible to all of you yes yes sir yes okay. sir so you can see here i have shown the one particular scenario as a figure where you can see the what exactly the loader is now all of you must be aware the loader main functionality is nothing but the load the particular program okay or the object module into the main memory for the execution purpose now already all of uh, we have studied with the help of the translator we uh, translate the particular program source program now your source program can be of any language higher level language now your translator can be a compiler or the assembler whatever it may be okay so we give the source program to the translator and that translator convert your source program into the object program okay and then this object program now you know the when you do the program that program when you compile the program that program gets saved on our secondary memory okay but you have to execute that program the program needs to be there in the primary memory okay now who is doing this task of taking that particular program to the primary memory so that task is done by our one of the system software that is nothing but our loader so loader functionality is nothing but what loading main functionality is what loading what to load loading the particular object program which is being uh, generated as the output of the translator where into the main memory okay so here i have shown the main memory here you can see the object program ready for the execution so as uh, it's a basic concept that uh, all of you must be knowing if the program need to be executed that program needs to be there in the main memory so who is doing that task of taking the program from particular your uh, secondary memory to the main memory that task is done by whom the loader okay same thing i have mentioned here a loader is a system software program that perform the loading function it brings the object program into the memory and start its execution so execution part is a part of central processing unit but to give that particular object program to the cpu by loading into the memory that is the task of our loader okay all of you understood the function what exactly the loader is yes yes 
yes understood what do you mean by the loader yes sir I repeat karana hello yes zamdade yes i understand now here i am seeing there are a lot of students newly joined here those who have already not attended the lecture physically they must be getting the problem while understand okay those students have attended the lecture physically already we have discussed this concept what exactly is the loader okay so for them once again i repeat so before we already we have seen the we are discussing the subject of system programming or the system software understood now there are the different example of system programming or the system software are there one of the popular example of system program or the system software is nothing but our operating system okay and apart from the operating system different examples are like there is another that is a loader which is being utilized when you uh, execute the program okay and before execution we have to do the compilation okay now in this whole process of execution there is the utilization of one particular system software that is being referred as a loader here i have mentioned loader is a system software program that perform the function of loading loading of what loading of the object program what is the object program what do you mean by the object program yes object program is what yes what do you mean by the object program bornare yes what is the object program yes anybody else what do you mean by the object program yes what is the object program gaade gayatri what is the object program yes can you hear me what is the object program yes nobody know what is the object program byte codes when it when it get generated uh, source program compile compiler when we compile the source program or assemble the source program now you know to do the compilation we have to utilize the translator as a compiler and when you have to assemble um, the program there we have to utilize the assembler so that is the output of translator okay now this program actually uh, before the loader there is a one more system software that is being utilized that is called as what the linker okay and linker does what linker link the different object modules together and generate the one particular exe file okay so that is that is the next part that we are going to discuss that is the linker but before that we are discussing what exactly is the loader is so loader does the functioning of what loading of this program into the main memory in your random access memory that is your main memory so in order to execute the program by <coughs> cpu that object program need to be there in your main memory and that functionality is done by whom that functionality is done by the loader okay understood this yes function of loader understood or not
होप से पल्लवी यस सर अंडरस्टूड द फंक्शन ऑफ लोडर यस सर ओके सो नेक्स्ट इज द सम मोर डिटेल्स इन लोडिंग व्हाट एग्जैक्टली इज द लोडिंग प्रोसेस इज नाउ यू कैन सी हियर अनदर मॉडिफाइड डायग्राम वी हैव शोन हियर now as as i said when the translator translate your source program into the object program and uh, that is being considered the executable program okay after linker link that different object models together it become the executable program so this executable program is load by whom the loader okay that is being considered the loading process where it is load it is being load into the main memory here you can see that is the reason here it is been mentioned executable program after the relocation okay now you can see one more arrow is shown from the main memory to the loader again okay where now loader gives the particular address address of particular starting instruction from where the execution should be start by the central processing unit who is doing the execution of program yes who is responsible for the execution of program which component of our computer system does the execution of program cpu cpu does the execution so loader also need to load the program into the memory and loader also need to provide the particular starting address of that particular program means suppose this is your program okay which is being loaded into the main memory here so loader has to give the starting address starting address manje kay ki kutlya location pasun tumcha program cha execution start hoil so that address is being referred as here the memory address register so here i have mentioned loader read the size of executable program it read the size of means how much size is how much particular uh, memory will be required for your executable program that is that is determined by the loader here i have mentioned loader read the size of executable program and then what the loader does loader request to the memory manager of operating system now who is going to who is going to give the memory for the you know, for the loading of program operating system so memory management it is one of the functionality of the operating system so that is the reason loader request the memory manager for the of the operating system to request the particular space to load the executable program into the primary memory so here operating system also plays the part loader has to request to the operating system to get the certain uh, space for that executable program now after getting that certain space here you can see the loader load the executable program into the primary memory like this you can see and then again loader send the starting address to the memory address register or to the program counter so computer can start the execution of loader program so that is the reason here you can see here loader take the executable program okay loader take the executable program and then it load into the main main okay that is here i have mentioned and then again loader send the starting address to the memory address register now this memory address register here can be the memory address register or the program counter so memory address register is the most closest to the our cpu so that is the reason load loader send the starting address to the memory address register or to the program counter so that our cpu can start execution of the program so this is nothing but the simple loading process where loader does the functioning of loading your executable program into the executable program or your object model into the main memory and then giving the from where that uh, from where the execution should start that starting address also given by the loader to whom that starting address given by the loader to the memory address register because this memory address register act as a temporary memory for our cpu and then from then from this memory address register our cpu start execution because in this memory address register starting address is being mentioned starting address manje kay ki kutlya location pasun program cha execution start hoil that is being mentioned in the memory address register and he kuni sangitlela asta that is being that is being told by the loader so loader gives the here i have mentioned loader send the starting address to the memory address register and from that the computer can start execution of the program okay so this is the general procedure 
now come to the point that is what are the this question being asked in the exam number of times for the four mark different function performed by the loaders okay now if you think about the functioning of the loaders as as per the point we have discussed first thing it does is nothing but the allocation allocation in the sense is read the particular loader read read the particular executable program or the object module after uh, when the compiler or the assembler which we are commonly refer as a translator translate that your source program into the machine program which we are calling as the object module or the executable program so loader does what loader determine how much size is there of that executable program how much space will be required for that program in the main memory so here i have mentioned the first function of loader that is the allocation it allocate the space for the program in the memory by calculating the size of the program so first task that loader does is nothing but the allocation of memory for that particular object program where in the <coughs> main memory okay so that is the functioning of first function of the loader okay now here this now some loaders are now these functions we are discussing these are the general functions means these are not the function of any specific loader but these are the general function because we are next point we are going to discuss is the type of the loaders okay so in that type of the loaders you will understand that some of the loaders might not be performing this function okay some of the loaders might not be performing this all the uh, function that we have mentioned here like four function we have mentioned here allocation linking relocation and the loading okay so some of the loader perform the allocation some of the loader doesn't perform the allocation some of the loader just only perform the loading some of the loader doesn't perform the relocation understood so when we see the type of the loader that time we will understand what are the exact functionality of particular specific loader but before that we have to discuss the general functions of the loader so in that first we have discussed the allocation so what happen in the allocation the space allocation for the particular program is done in the memory by calculating the size of the program okay now linking as all of you know the linking is done by the linker itself but if somehow the linking is not possible by the linker and if there is a need of performing the linking after the linker does its role then also loader can also do the functioning of linking also but that is not the compulsory functioning of the loaders linking actually done by the linker itself okay another second main functionality performed by the loader is the relocation this point also we have discussed in the physical lectures what do you mean by the relocation yes what is the concept of relocation what is the relocation as one of the functionality of the loader yes jump that day what is relocation allocation of space in in memory relocation allocation we have discussed that is not allocating the space for program in the memory what do you mean by the relocation adjust the right space exactly adjust Ata, all suppose, address correct suppose after translation of program by the translator this is your object module generated or the executable program generated understood now if this program is generated and while translation address is given that this program should execute from the memory location 101 but if the memory lock on the at the memory location 101 some other task is going on okay some other task is going on then can we execute can the can the is it possible to execute the program from this memory location 101 if some other task is going on at this location no <coughs> no then in that case this, this we have to we have to change the location of that particular program so that that program can be executed from other memory location understood so adjusting the memory location when it is not possible to execute the program from specified 
memory location that is called as what the relocation the same thing i have mentioned there are some address dependent location in the program such as address constant that particular instruction of the program we we have seen the concept regarding that address sensitive program or the address sensitive instruction if such kind of thing is there in your program then in in case of that the relocation of that particular program or the instruction of the program has to be done and that function is also done by performed by whom the loader okay understood this yes sir and the last and the main functionality of the loader is nothing but the loading which is nothing but what place the all the machine instruction and data of corresponding program corresponding program means of your source program into the memory so loading is nothing but simply take your executable program or the object program and place that object program in which memory main memory why the why that object program need to be there in the main memory what is the reason can you can we execute can the computer execute the program or can the cpu execute the program directly from the secondary memory is it possible no so that is the reason that program has to bring into the main memory and that is called as a loading so mainly here you can see we have to focus on these three major functionality first is what first function allocation allocation tithe kay hota space allocated for the particular program in the memory understood relocation manje kay yes relocation what do you mean by the relocation changing the location of the program understood that is considered as a relocation ki jab suppose allocation loader ne allocation kele memory location la kiti 101 barobar allocation kutle location la jale 101 but have 101 look memory location la if some other task is going on then we can, the particular it is not possible to execute the program from this location so this location has to be change to some other available memory location for example 103 so that is called as what the relocation understood yes relocation point understood Yes, yes, sir. yes, sir. And lastly, is nothing but the loading that already we have discussed. So keep in mind these three functionality. Okay, uh, that is being performed by the loader. Now, next important point we have to discuss that is regarding the uh, which are the different types of the loader. On which on this point also number of questions being asked number of times. Okay, that is the different types of the loaders. So some of the types of the loader we are going to discuss here. Now, in that first is the compile and go loader. then we have the general loader absolute loader relocating loader and the direct linking loader okay let's see the one by one before that here you can see the scenario that we are discussing this also during the physical lecture also i told you uh, uh, how the execution of program goes on okay so this is nothing but your source program when you compile the program there you utilize some translator so your translator can be your compiler or it can be your assembler it depends on what is your source program so if your source program is assembly language program you have to utilize the translator as a assembler if your source program is any higher level language program like program like the c c++ java etc in that case you have to utilize the compiler plus uh, in case of the java you need to utilize the interpreter as so translator translate your program and generate the object module okay some of you must have check when you compile the program it generate one particular file okay that is being referred as the particular that is being referred as or the 
ऑब्जेक्ट मॉड्यूल ओके यू कैन चेक वेन यू कंपाइल द प्रोग्राम जिथे तुम्हें प्रोग्राम सेव के ज्यास तुम्हें कंपाइल करता प्रोग्राम ऐट दैट टाइम तिथे एक पर्टिक्युलर फाइल जनरेट होते दैट इज बी रिफर्ड एज वॉर द ऑब्जेक्ट मॉड्यूल ओके नाउ नाउ इन केस ऑफ वन सोर्स प्रोग्राम देर माइट बी द मोर दैन one object module there might be a three object modules four five etc depends on which things which functions you have utilized in your programs okay which library functions is required by your source program depend on that number of object modules are generated understood so linking of this object module is done by whom linker understood and after linking the particular binary program is generated that is being considered as executable program and loading of that binary program or executable program or object module you can say that loading is done by the our loader okay here you can say and then finally after the execution you get the result so this is the uh, general overview of uh, linker and the loader along with its uh, interaction with the translator okay now let's see the discuss about the different types of the loader now in that you can see the first type here i have mentioned compile and the go loader okay now this loader is also called as assemble and the go also okay another name for this loader is also what assemble and the go loader or it can be also called as a compile and the go loader now what exactly this loader does and what what is exactly the concept let's see here is your source program okay now you know the source program is translated by the particular translator here we, here we are consider the, our translator as a assembler okay now here you you can see i have mentioned the compile and the go translator what compile and the go translator now what actually what exactly it is doing it is translating your source program into the object program and also it is loading that program into the memory okay now here you can see the main memory we have shown okay now which things you are observing in the main memory here which components you are observing in the main memory yes which components you can see here in the main memory what you are observing in the main memory here in this diagram assembler so you can see here assembler is also there in the main memory okay now but you can see assembler is one particular system software correct just like our yes, just like our compiler the size of the assembler always used to be the big size size always used to be a big size now if you see the assembler itself in the main memory okay now here what i have written compile and the go translator what compile and the go translator here i have new here i have uh, anywhere i have not mentioned anything about the loader can you see the word loader here anywhere in this figure in this figure no because here our assembler itself is acting as a loader for your kind information what assembler itself acting as a what loader yes that is the reason here i have mentioned compile and the go translator or it is being also referred as what the assembler and the go translator getting so here our assembler itself acting as a loader so it does the assembling of the program also and it also load that program in the memory also and assembler itself or compiler itself send the starting address send the starting address to the cpu for the execution purpose okay now what do you think what can be the disadvantage of having the assembler itself in the main memory main memory is the which kind of memory yes as compared with the secondary memory yes what is the difference between the main memory and the secondary memory
which memory size used to be the large main memory or the secondary memory yes which memory size is the large secondary memory or the primary memory secondary memory now you must have done the programs of the assembly language program tumhi assembler kuthe install karat hota yes tumhi te tasm wagere use kela asel na barobar where yes, you are install yes. where you are installing that secondary memory or the primary memory yes on which memory secondary memory right yes or no are you getting my voice yes sir so here you can see the assembler is shown in the main memory understood now if the assembler is in the main memory now what is the disadvantage of that disadvantage is nothing but the lot of memory will be get wasted if the assembler is there in the main memory understood but in case of the compile and compile and go loader or in case of the assemble and go loader the assembler used to be the part of the main memory okay and assembler itself perform the functioning of the loader also loading also and assembler also performing the function of assembling the program also converting the assembly language program into the object program also okay so that is the reason this is also the assembler itself okay this is also the assembler itself which where you can see the i have mentioned the compile and go translator or assemble and the go translator understood so here it is being shown in the main memory okay here it is just shown for the understanding purpose that what source program is translated by the assembler or the assemble and go translator okay and that program is loaded in the memory so this loading functioning is done by the assembler itself as you can see the assembler is the part of the main memory if the assembler is part of the main memory instead of secondary memory because of this the lot of memory is get wasted as you know we have the limited main memory as compared with the secondary memory so that is the main thing related with the compile and go loader which i have mentioned here you can see compile and go loader in this type of loader the instruction is read line by line and its machine code is obtained and it is directly put in the main memory at some known address so what do we mean by this that means the assembler run in the one part of the memory and the assemble machine instruction and data is directly put into the assigned memory location so the conversion of source program into the machine program is also done by the assembler itself and loading is also done by the assembler itself that is the reason this particular loader is named as compile and go loader or it is being also named as a assemble and the go loader okay so after completion of assembly process after completion of conversion of source program into the assembly program the assembler or this compile and go loader or the assemble and go loader assign the starting address of the program to the location counter that previous in the previous figure we have seen okay every loader has to give the starting address to the cpu which is being that starting address is stored in the memory address register or into the location counter or into the program counter because cpu can refer this memory address register or the location counter and in that location counter what is being mentioned the starting address of the particular program is mentioned from here cpu can start the execution okay so the only the functionality performed by this particular compile and go loader which is nothing but the particular translator itself that is nothing but assembling of the program also as well as loading the program within a main memory also so both of the functionalities performed by the this loader so this is a very old kind of loader generally it is being not utilized today also it is today in today's period this is not utilized okay 
so what is the example of such kind of loader water for 77 that is the one kind of uh, example of this compile and go loader or example of assemble and go loader so it is being uh, uh, it is being there in case of the fortran compiler okay in case of the fortran compiler which uses the loader and go scheme okay so in case of the fortran compiler there is the utilization of such kind of loaders okay where that particular uh, compiler itself or the assembler itself do the functioning of the compilation or assembling as well as the functioning of the loading also now along with this you have to mention the advantages and the disadvantages also okay so this is a simple uh, to implement this kind of loader is simple to implement okay and you can see there is a no need of some extra system software okay there is a no need of the extra system software here i have mentioned because assembler is based in the one part of the memory and loader simply load the assemble machine instruction into the memory no additional routines no additional routines in the sense no additional system software required to load the compile code into the memory because assembler itself is the part of our main memory okay no additional no additional routines in the sense we know the in order to load the program into the main memory we need the additional sub routine that is the loader but in case of the compile and go loader that functionality is done by the translator itself understood that functionality is done by the translator itself that is the reason it is being referred as what the compile and the go loader okay let's see the disadvantages of this so disadvantages are what as we have shown in the figure the assembler itself is the part of the memory okay so because of that there is a wastage in memory space due to the presence of the assembler in the main memory so that is the main disadvantage of this particular compile and go loader okay and as the assembler is the part of the main memory as all of you know our main memory is a volatile kind of memory okay it used to store the it used to store the different instruction data or whatever the uh, what you can say the software for the some temporary time understood so as it is storing the content temporary time every time there is a need to reassemble the program okay every time there is a need of the reassembling of the program because assembler is the part of the main memory understood so this is nothing but our first kind of loader that is the compile and go loader which advantages and the disadvantages we have seen advantages is what no extra sub routine like no extra system software the, like loader we need to utilize because here our compiler or the assembler itself acting as a loader okay and disadvantage is what if you put your assembler as a system software or the translator on the main memory because of that lot of wastage of the main memory good morning all of you this is darkness sir and today we are continuing with our yesterday's lecture where in the yesterday's lecture we have seen what is actually mean by the loaders and also we have discussed some of the types of the loaders also so basically we are discussing the subject system programming and the operating system in that already in the physical classes we have seen what is exactly the concept of system programming so system programming is nothing but the programs which is being uh, utilized for the system to work so the program which are being there to help the system uh, to make the system to work that particular programs comes under the category of the system program and one of the famous example of system program also we have seen that is the operating system because without the operating system our uh, computer system cannot work so operating system is one of the best example of the system program so further uh, we are now in the unit number second and at the end of unit number second uh, we are discussing about the uh, another tool which is there uh, utilized in the execution of the program execution of any uh, higher level language program or the assembly language program so like the operating system there are the other tools are being there like there is a linker is there loaders is there assembler is there compilers are there so these are all the examples of the system program now we are discussing about the what exactly is the loader is so here i also mentioned in the previous lecture already we have discussed these things so uh, just as a recap and then we uh, continue with our 
uh, further part okay so here also i have mentioned loader is nothing but the system program that perform the function of loading so what exactly the loader loads so loader actually load the object program that object program is nothing but the output of our translator translator can be your compiler or the assembler so here you can see this is the source program now source program can be your c c++ java etc or uh, and for this kind of source program we have to utilize the compiler as a translator and if your source program is assembly language program then your uh, translator will be the assembler so that translator will generate some object program and the loading of that object program into the memory or loading of that particular this object program can also be referred as a some executable program also so loading of that program into the memory that is the main functionality of the loader so here you can see this is our main memory so for in case of computer system if any program needs to be execute that program needs to be in the main memory and to bring that program into the main memory the one of the system software which play their part that is nothing but our loader okay now this part in the previous lecture also i told you okay now uh, regarding the uh, uh, different functionality of the loaders also we have discussed and this is the also the another general procedure how the loader perform the loading so here this is the output of the translator as in the previous figure i have shown you the loader load this program into the memory this is the main memory okay okay here you can see the executable program after the relocation <coughs> or after the loading by the loader then again uh, this loader does the one more task that is nothing but loader give the starting address of the program in this memory address register so loader has to provide the starting address of the program in the memory address register what is the memory address register memory address register is nothing but the one of the temporary memory okay that temporary memory uh, which is most closest to the uh, what you can say which is most closest to our central processing unit okay so uh, in that case uh, the particular loader has to perform the uh, functionality of giving that particular so as i said the loader has to perform the one more functionality uh, apart from loading the program into the uh, main memory and that is nothing but provide, providing the starting address of the program within this memory address register and this starting address being utilized by the our processor which is responsible for the execution so loader also give the starting address within this uh, memory address register and that starting address is utilized by the our cpu uh, for the execution purpose okay so from where the execution should start that will be determined with the help of that starting address so this memory so uh, so the loader send the starting address to the memory address register or to the program counter so computer can start the execution of loaded program okay so this is also in the previous lecture we have discussed in details another thing which we have discussed in the details nothing but these are the different functionality which is performed by the loaders okay so one first functionality is the allocation then the linking uh, linking uh, is also performed by the sum of the loaders okay in order to perform the linking there is a use of the separate system software that we are going to see in the next unit uh, next uh, lecture that is the linker is a separate system software which is generally specifically utilized for the linking purpose but there are also the uh, this functionality uh, there are also the some loaders which perform this functionality of the linking also but uh, mainly we have to focus on these three functionality that is allocation relocation and the loading okay so allocation is nothing but already we have discussed allocating the space for the program in the memory with the help of the operating system relocation is nothing but the if there are some address dependent location in the programs uh, address dependent location in this is address sensitive instruction uh, uh, some kind of address sensitive instruction which is the part of your object program object program is nothing but the uh, result of the translation of uh, translator when the source program get translated into the object program that object program also come with the certain addresses from where the that program has to be executed or the instruction has to be executed if the instruction cannot execute from that particular given address then that that addresses of such instruction has to be changed okay so changing and modifying that addresses is nothing but the code as a relocation that also functionality performed by the loader and the main task is nothing but 
loading the machine instruction and data into the particular main memory so these are the different function performed by the loaders but it is not like that uh, as uh, we have already seen the types of the loader every lo every loader uh, it it may be possible that some of the loader will perform all this functionality and some of the loader will not perform this functionality okay in the types of the loader we, we have already seen it and still about the two loaders we will discuss that so these are the type of the loader okay mainly compile and go loader general loader absolute loader relocating loader and the direct linking loader okay so this is the overview of uh, linker and loader uh, already last time also i have told you okay translator uh, take this input as a source program generate the object model number of object models are generated here more than one object files are generated then this object files are linked by the linker and then loader load this particular singly executable file into the uh, main memory and then we get the result okay this already last time also i told you so this is uh, this is our first type of uh, loader which already we have discussed that is called as a compile and go loader now in case of this loader what happen the assembler itself is considered as a uh, loader or the translator itself is a considered as a loader that's why you can see here this particular source program is converted by the compile and go translator okay and then it is being uh, loaded into the memory okay so here you can see the assembler itself is a part of the memory okay because of lot of memory get utilized for the assembler itself as you can see the assembler is a part of the main memory the program source program get converted into the object program and then assembler uh, itself load it into the memory and that is the reason this particular loader is also referred as a compile and go translator or the compile or assemble and the go translator so disadvantage of this loader is what the assembler itself is a part of uh, the particular main memory and advantage is nothing but what as assembler is a part of the main memory loading becomes easy as the program get converted uh, within a main memory only and it is being uh, loaded within a uh, particular that memory itself okay so same thing i have mentioned here compile and go loader in this type of the loader the instruction is read line by line machine code is obtained and it is directly put in the main memory at some known address okay so it means the assembler runs in one part of the memory and the assemble machine instruction converted machine instruction and data is directly put into the assigned memory location so this is the one of the example of this last time already i told you okay so uh, regarding this some advantage disadvantage also we have discussed last time like uh, advantage is nothing but as you can see the uh, that particular assembler itself act as a loader and that is being part of the main memory in some particular part of the main memory that uh, this compile and go loader or the uh, assemble and go loader is uh, located okay present and uh, because of that uh, the loading process becomes simple as this particular compile and go loader or assemble and go loader which is nothing but your assembler itself or which is nothing but your translator itself is a part of the main memory so the loading process become easy because of that so there is a no uh, uh, need of additional routines like no need of any additional system software like special loader uh, there is a no need of such kind of special loader in case of uh, this kind of uh, compile and go loader because what i am saying the assembler itself act as a loader here that is the reason the name given to this particular loader is uh, compile and go loader or this can be also refer as a assemble and the go loader okay now uh, another thing disadvantage is what that is the wastage of memory that already i told you uh, wastage of memory space due to the presence of assembler in the memory itself okay and another disadvantage is what the uh, execution time will be more in this uh, particular scheme because every time we need to assemble the program even if you don't make the changes within a program the program has to be reassemble every time because the assembler is present in the main memory and you know the in the main memory is a volatile kind of memory and because of volatility the data cannot be remain in main memory for longer period of time so every time even if you don't make the uh, modification in your program the particular reassembling need to be done so second kind of loader also we have discussed that is the absolute loader so this is this loader try to uh, overcome the limitations of our previous loader 
in case of this loader uh, the assembler or translator is not present in the main memory it is present on the secondary memory and because of that that wastage of memory get avoided okay now name given to this loader as absolute loader because this loader only perform the function of loading it doesn't perform the functionality of allocation and the relocation so that functionality of allocation and relocation is performed by the programmer or the assembler and that is the reason name given to this loader as a absolute loader because it just only one functionality to perform that is nothing but the loading functionality as you can see here there is a no presence of uh, uh, assembler in this main memory okay uh, only in the main memory uh, the program is loaded by the absolute loader the translator or assembler is present on the secondary memory itself okay so absolute loader actually absolute loader is part of this particular main memory okay here you can see this for the demonstration purpose you know to understand loader loads this particular part in the main memory okay and uh, so so that is the one disadvantage which was there in case of the compile and go loader that is avoided in case of the absolute loader because in the absolute loader there is a no presence of translator uh, within the main memory our translator that can be a compiler or the assembler that is present on the secondary memory in the main memory only programs program are present and loader is also the part of the main memory okay and uh, uh, regarding this also advantages we have seen uh, advantage is nothing but it is simple to implement the wastage of space memory is avoided uh, that is the main advantage okay and uh, you can have the allow this particular loader allow the multiple programs to be load multiple uh, uh, programs of the different language different language as well as the uh, program uh, related with the uh, uh, large uh, code as well as the program related to the large data that can be also easily loaded using this kind of loader that is the reason this is being also referred as a efficient for the execution disadvantage is nothing but uh, in case of this uh, uh, one more advantage is nothing but related to the loader functionality of loader is only limited that is just to load other functionality like allocation and relocation that is done by the uh, programmer and the assembler itself now disadvantage is nothing but the programmer has to take care of the memory management so the regarding that the programmer need to be the knowledge of how to manage the memory uh, while doing the programming itself he has to manage all the things he, so programmer also manage the relocation part also so that is the one of the disadvantage the programmer duty to adjust all the intersecting addresses and uh, manually do the linking activity loading uh, relocating activity that has to be done by the programmer so this is the part already we have discussed that's why uh, uh, in the fast manner i am uh, discussing this okay so mainly the, if you compare the first loader that is the compile and go loader and the second loader that is absolute loader the differences are uh, quite visible like in the compile and go loader our uh, loader Uh, the assembler or the com uh, compiler or uh, we give name to it, it as a general name translator itself act as a loader and that is part of your main memory and which is doing the functionality of uh, convert translation also and doing the functionality of loading also as the assembler is a part of the main memory in case of the compile and go loader waste of space is happening okay that is the main thing in case of the first in second this uh, uh, drawback is avoided as in case of the second your assembler or compiler or general name to that translator is not part of the main memory it is part of the secondary memory and uh, this loader only do the functionality of loading it does not perform the allocation relocation etc okay so uh, now then we have the third kind of loader that is our general loader scheme okay now as compare with our previous two loader compile and go loader and the absolute loader Uh, uh specifically in case of the compile and go loader in which the assembler is placed in the main memory and because of there is a result in the wastage of memory so to overcome this uh, we require the addition of new program okay and that addition of new program or addition of that new system program you must say the system program that is nothing but the loader so in case of this uh, compile and go loader 
assembler itself is doing the activity of the loading or compiler itself is doing the activity of loading or general uh, to name to this to compiler and assembler we can utilize translator so translator has to do the uh, functionality of the loading and that translator as assembler or compiler is part of the main memory because of the wastage of memory happening so to avoid this the special program is introduced okay special system program is introduced and that special system program is nothing but our loader itself okay just like the absolute loader in the previous uh, example we have seen so name given to this loader is a general loader because this is the loader generally utilized in the most of the computer system nowadays okay that is the reason name given to it as a general loader the most popular loader being utilized in the most of the computer system okay now as i said the new uh, system program is intro introduced which is performing the functionality of the loading instead of uh, uh giving that role to the translator new uh, program is introduced that is being considered as a loader which will do the functionality of loading allocation relocation etc now if you see this now how it is avoiding that waste of space in the memory now loader itself is also the part of the main memory but size of this loader is very small less than the particular assembler or particular translator if you see and that is the reason here i have mentioned this loader is assumed to be the smaller than assembler so the memory is available to the user so so the amount of memory which is required for the assembler uh, when the assembler is there present in the main memory as compared with that loader is having the less uh, size and that is the reason loader is requiring the less memory if loader is requiring the less memory the then more memory can be utilized by the user for the execution purpose i am talking about the main memory okay so loader accept the machine instruction here and the related data information present in the object format and place that machine instruction and data into the uh, executable form and load it into the main memory okay so in case of these reassembling is not required which we are requiring in case of the compile and go loader reassembling or the recompiling is not required because here assembler or the compiler or generally the translator is not part of the main memory it is part of the secondary memory and you know the secondary memory is a non volatile so it is a permanent storage okay so reassembling if even if you don't do the modification in your program uh, in case of compile and go loader we need to do the reassembling but in case of this if you don't do the modification there is no need to do the reassembling of the program or retranslation of the program if you use the general loader scheme because here loader is a part of the main memory translator is not part of the main memory translator is present on the secondary memory and loader is doing the specific functionality of the loading relocation and uh, uh, allocation understood so this is the loader which is doing all the functionality that initially we have discussed allocation relocation and the uh, loading understood so that is the reason this is the most popular loader being utilized as compared with our previous two loader so here you can see the scenario i have shown uh, you can see uh, there might be the more than one source program so translator translator can be in the assembler or it can be a compiler which translate the program into the number of object programs so object program can be one or it can be mo more than one for the particular source program it depends on what is uh, what kind of different functions you are utilizing the source program what are the library functions required for your source program depends on that your source program is going to get converted by the translator and your translator convert your source program into the multiple object files okay so these multiple object files has to be load by the loader into the main memory now before the loader there is a another system program is utilized that is called as a linker that in the next lecture we will see so these multiple object programs are linked together by the linker and linker create one single executable file and that single executable file is loaded by the loader so loader has to take these object programs or the object module and load into the main memory here you can see the object program ready for the execution which is loaded by the loader itself and you can see here the loader itself is the part of the main memory it here i have shown it outside the main memory it is just for your understanding purpose ki loader is loading 
this object program into the main memory but loader itself is the part of the main memory here you can see there is a no assembler which is a, or no translator uh, which is part of the main memory here loader is a part of the main memory and loader is requiring the less memory as compared with the assembler so this is the most popular kind of uh, loader which is generally utilized in the computer system as compared with our previous two loaders first was the compile and go and second was the uh, absolute loader okay so this loader uh, having the uh, various advantages like it is smaller than the assembler no reassemble reassembling is required uh, you can write the different programs in the different languages there is a no wastage of memory because assembler is not placed in the memory so memory is available to the user and this avoid the disadvantages which we are coming in case of the compile and go loader so only small amount of memory of the uh, small amount of main memory is utilized for the loader that can be considered as a one of the uh, minor disadvantage it is not the major disadvantage okay so general loader is better than the previous two loaders that first was the compile and go loader and second was the uh, absolute loader because you know the compile and go loader there is a wastage of memory in case of absolute loader absolute loader only performing the function of loading it is not performing the functionality related with the allocation and the relocation but this general loader performing that all functionality all functionality in the sense it perform the functionality of allocation also it perform the functionality of relocation also as well as it perform the functionality of the loading also that is the reason it is considered as a better than all previous loader okay now let's uh, come to the our uh, last kind of uh, loader that is nothing but the uh, direct linking loader okay so this is considered as a one of the uh, popular kind of loader which is come under the category of general general loader scheme only okay uh, that is being refer as a direct linking loader so it is also considered as a relocatable loader okay and this loader also perform the all the functionality means it perform the functionality of the allocation also it perform the functionality of the relocation also it perform the functionality of the uh, loading also and it can also perform the functionality of the linking also so that is the reason here i have mentioned most popular loader uh, loading scheme okay now uh, in case of this loader we are going to see the some different uh, concept okay now when the as you can see in the this particular previous figure uh, you can see uh, when the uh, particular translator now i told you the translator can be assembler it can be a compiler when the translator convert your source program into the object programs in that case translator has to give some information regarding some information regarding this particular uh each particular procedure or the segment okay so what we are trying to see uh, see in this a uh, direct linking loader what kind of information is provided by this translator to the loader okay what kind of information need to be provided by this translator to the loader that part we are going to uh, discuss in the direct linking loader because in case of the direct linking loader all the things are same that it perform the functionality of allocation relocation and the uh, loading okay so uh, some extra thing regarding this we are going to see so here i have mentioned the assembler must give assembler or you can say the translator also here must give the loader following information as you can see here uh, this this structure you must keep in mind while we are discussing that point the translator must give the different information to the loader okay now what kind of that different information that we are going to discuss here okay so that information is here you can see the assembler must give the loader following information regarding different procedures or the different data that we are utilizing in the program means in short assembler must provide the various kind of information related with your uh, program or related with your uh source program or you can say the object module now what is that information assembler should provide to the loader so this is the information in that first thing is what the length of the segment length of the segment in the sense length of the different uh, modules which is present 
uh, which is part of your program or length of your program itself size of your program itself so assembler must give the loader this information what is the length of the program what is the size of the program that is being mentioned here the length of the segment because loader has to allocate the space within a memory and for that purpose loader need the information what is exactly the size of your program and that information is provided by the assembler or the translator to the loader okay then second kind of information that uh, assembler must provide to the loader that is here a list of symbol defined in the current segment that may be referenced by the other segment what a list of symbol defined in the current segment that may be referenced by the other segment means what the publicly declared variable in your program suppose this is your program now in this program there are the different functions you have utilized okay different modules you have utilized now in this program here you have uh, publicly declare one variable a now this variable declaring in this function now this function in this function this variable a declare means this variable a is publicly available for this function as you have declared this variable in this function suppose if you call this function as a xyz function and in that xyz function you have declared the variable a so this a is nothing but the publicly declared variable related with the xyz suppose you call another there is another function that is the abc okay now in case of this abc function this a variable is nothing but the external variable because it is not defined in the a it is this a variable is not defined in the abc this is defined in the xyz so if you want to utilize this a variable in the abc then it is to be utilized as a external variable understood because it is publicly defined in the xyz so this kind of information has to be provided by the loader to uh, to the loader by the assembler so in that second is what a list of symbol defined in the current segment that may be referenced by the other segment as i said there are the two function one is the xyz and one is the abc so whatever the symbols that you have utilized in the particular function xyz regarding this the information has to be provided to the loader okay and because if you have declared the variable a here this variable can be utilized in the this function abc but by defining it as a external variable okay so this is the second inform list of symbol defining the current segment that may be referenced by the other segment manje ekada फंक्शन मध्य तुम्हें वेरिएबल डिक्लेयर के डिक्लेयर सम वेरिएबल इन वन पर्टिकुलर फंक्शन दैट पर्टिकुलर वेरिएबल इज कंसिडर एज अ पब्लिक डिक्लेरेशन थर्ड काइंड ऑफ इन्फॉर्मेशन दैट मस्ट बी प्रोवाइडेड बाय द असेंबलर टू द लोडर दैट इज अ लिस्ट ऑफ सिंबॉल नॉट डिफाइन इन द सेगमेंट बट रेफरेंस इन द सेगमेंट सो जस्ट आई टोल्ड यू टू फंक्शन एक्स वाई जेड एंड द ए बी सी ओके this is the x y z and this is the a b c okay so publicly defined variable in this function that also need to be informed by the assembler to the loader okay and if some variable is not defined in this x y z but it is utilized in the x y z so that also need to be informed to the loader by the assembler so here in this function a variable is declared okay and this a variable is considered as a what publicly defined variable in this xyz but if in this xyz function you have utilized the another variable that is the b variable and this b variable is not declared in this xyz but it is declared in the function abc so in this case this b variable become external variable for the xyz okay and this b variable in case of abc become the publicly available variable so in short ki ja function madhe tumhi variable declare karta hai tya function sathi te variable being considered as a publicly declared ani ekadya function madhe tumhi variable use kele ani tya function madhe te variable declare kelel nahi in case of that function that variable become the external variable so 
you have to inform to the loader regarding all the publicly declare variable also you need to inform to the loader all the external variables what do we mean by the external variables a list of symbol or the variable not defined in the particular segment or procedure but reference in the segment ki ase symbol je tumhi tumcha tya procedure madhe kiwa function madhe declare kelel nahi but you have utilized that okay public variable manje kutle a list of symbol defined in the correct segment that may be referenced by the other segment public variable manje kay tumhi jar tumcha function madhe te variable declare kele astil then that variables are considered as a publicly declare variables so that publicly declare variable might be utilized by the other functions also so in short the assembler has to provide the information to the loader regarding the publicly declare variable as well as the regarding the externally variables also okay so here i have mentioned the external variables mean list of symbol or the variable not defined in the segment but utilized in the particular segment segment ta arta ita फंक्शन किंवा प्रोसिजर घ्या ओके देन ऑल्सो द असेंबलर नीड टू इन्फॉर्म टू द लोडर रिगार्डिंग द इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट द व्हेरियस ऍड्रेस कॉन्स्टंट इफ डिफरंट ऍड्रेस कॉन्स्टंट आर युटिलाइज इन द प्रोग्राम दॅट इन्फॉर्मेशन ऑल्सो नीड टू गिव्हन बाय द असेंबलर टू द लोडर ओके अँड फायनली असेंबलर हॅज टू गिव्ह टू द लोडर द मशीन कोड ट्रान्सलेशन ऑफ सोर्स प्रोग्राम अँड देअर रिलेटिव्ह ऍड्रेसेस असाइन सो फायनली assembler need to give to the loader machine translation program means translated object program itself has to given to the loader okay conversion of source program into the machine program so that is here i have mentioned the machine code translation of source program and the relative addresses so when the source program get converted into the assembly uh, when the source program as assembly language program get translated into the machine language program that machine language program has also to be provided to the loader along with their addresses so these different things has to be provided by the assembler to the uh, loaders okay and with the help of these then loader does the functioning of allocation relocation and the uh, loading okay now uh, related with uh, this uh, uh, there are the different object modules are produced by the loader okay now next point we are going to discuss here different object module produced by the assembler okay now which are that different object module produced by the assembler and these object modules produced by the assembler is given to the loaders here you can see here in the diagram you can see the uh now let's see the next point regarding the uh direct linking loader now in case of the direct linking loader as we have discussed it is the most popular kind of loader okay and uh, this loader has to uh, provide the different information uh, has to receive the different information from the assembler so as this particular uh, direct linking loader as i have mentioned the most popularly utilized uh, loader is there and it is also being famously referred as a uh, relocating loader also uh, this also comes under the category of general loader scheme okay and uh, <clears throat> Uh, it perform the all the functionality that is being performed by the general loader scheme like it perform the functionality of the allocation it perform the functionality of relocation and it perform the functioning of the loading also and sometimes it can also perform the functionality of the linking also okay so uh, as you can see uh, this particular uh, direct linking loader uh, has to give the different information has to re- sorry has to receive the information from the assembler and assembler must give the different kind of information to this particular loader okay now what kind of information that needs to be given by the assembler to the loader this that is this different kind of information like the assembler must provide the loader the length of the segment here the length of the segment you can take length of the particular program okay uh, source program you can say 
and the different modules which is present in the source program or different procedure or the function which is present in the source program that all the information has to be given by the assembler to the loaders okay also loader need to provide the also assembler need to provide the loader second kind of information a list of symbol defining the current segment list of symbol defining the current segment that may be referenced by the other segment means if some uh, variable defined in the one particular function or the procedure that may be utilized by the other function or the procedure so variable in which uh, uh, the particular function or the procedure in which the variable is declared that variable we generally refer as a publicly declared variable so assembler need to give the information to the loader regarding this publicly declared variable also third kind of information that assembler must give to the loader is nothing but the a list of symbol or the variable which are not defined in the program or in some procedure but it is reference or utilized in the other program or in the other functions so that particular uh, variables is called as what the external variables okay so uh, third kind of information that assembler must give to the loader is nothing but the external variables so what do we mean by the external variables a list of symbol or the variable not defined in the current not defined in the segment segment means not defined in the particular function or the procedure but may be utilized in the uh, but may be reference in the other segment or the other procedure okay then fourth kind of information that need to be provided by the assembler to the loader is nothing but the information about the different address constant okay different address constant that we are utilizing in the program and fifth kind of information is nothing but the the assembler must give the loader that machine language program itself here i have mentioned the machine code translation of source program and the relative addresses this information also need to be provided by the assembler to the loader means fifth information is what the machine code itself and the related addresses has to be provided by the assembler to the loaders okay so you can see in this uh, uh, diagram this is the diagram you can also refer it for the direct linking loader so translator as a, you can consider as a assembler so assembler has to provide this five different kind of information to the loaders here you can see the we have shown the object programs given to the loader so along with this uh, uh, object programs different information provided to the loaders by the assembler is this that we have shown here length of the segment or length of the prog program or length of the different procedure function that you are utilizing the program list of variables of the symbol which are publicly defined in particular program or the procedure or the function a list of symbol which is not defined in the particular procedure or function but which is utilized in that function or the procedure that particular variables are called as a external so external variables are variable which are uh, which are being utilized in certain function or the procedure without being declared in that particular function or the procedure so that are not defined in that particular currently utilized function or the procedure but that are declared or defined in the other function or the other procedure and from that other function and other procedure you are utilizing it in the current procedure or the current function that is the reason that are referred as the external variables and fourth information about the address constant and fifth is nothing but the machine code translation of the source program that is the machine program itself has to be given by the assembler to the loaders okay now uh, so uh, next point is what the assembler as we have seen in the previous section has to provide the different information to the loaders okay so assembler produce the different object modules okay that you can see in this uh, part these different object modules are produced by the object program or the object modules you can also call it so assembler produce the different object modules and whatever information that i told you here this five different kind of information this five different kind of information is part of the that particular object modules which are produced by the assembler now which object modules are produced by the assembler that we are going to see here now in that first object module which is produced by the assembler is called as external symbol directory okay 
now here we have taken the uh, sample assim language program okay for your understanding purpose now as i said the assembler has assembler produce the different uh, object modules in that first object module is what external symbol directory now what is this external symbol directory now you can see the external symbol directory contain the two important information it contain the information about the all the symbols that are defined in this program but may be referenced by the other program means what it contains the publicly defined variables understood that is the first thing which is contained by the external symbol directory what it contain the information about all the symbol that are defined in this program but may be referenced by the other program understood second information it contains contain the symbols or the variable that is referenced in this program but are defined in the other program what variables or the symbol reference or utilize in the particular current program but defined in the other program now in the same example let me show you which are the publicly defined variable or the symbols and which are the externally defined variable or the symbols okay now related with the uh, first kind of information which is part of the external symbol directory that is it contain the information about all symbol that are defined in the program but may be referenced in the other program now in this in this program the variable which is declared with the entry that variables or the symbols are considered as a publicly declared variable so here result is the publicly declared variable okay so this symbol is declared or defined in this uh, particular program and it can be utilized in the other program okay so it is being shown here with the keyword entry okay so result is the publicly declared variable second kind of uh, uh, information in the external symbol directory it contain the variable or symbols that are referenced in this program but may be defined in the other program so this is this is nothing but the information regarding the external variables so in this program sum is the external variable now external variables are mentioned in the program with the help of the keyword extrn with the help of the keyword extrn okay so sum is the external variable here which is not defined in this program but utilized in this program so some some variable might be defined or declared in the other program but you have utilized in this program so if you want to utilize this in the program it has to be declared as a ext aria so generally first kind of object module produced by the assembler that is the external symbol directory so it contains the two kinds of information that is the publicly declared variable and the external variables okay regarding the certain program then now regarding the same uh, we can see here uh, you can observe here external symbol directory look like this it consists of the line numbers symbols type their relative locations and the length so different symbol which is part of our program are nothing but the main result and the sum so main is nothing but our segment definition name is the main is nothing but our segment definition our program is starting from the main that is the reason it come under the type segment definition result is what result variable or the symbol it is the locally or locally defined variable okay publicly defined variable that is the reason ld locally defined variable sum is what sum is not defined in that our program but it is externally referenced it is the externally referenced variable that's why its type is refer as what er now relative locations main our uh, you can see relative the relative uh, locations our main main location uh, location for the main is what location counter for the main is what zero it is starting from the zero and it is ending at the 36 regarding the our variable result now result is the publicly declared variable locally defined variable it is having the address 32 so in the external symbol directory all this information is shown you can see main its type is segment definition symbol result its type is the locally defined symbol sum its type is the external reference and their relative locations and their length is also shown 
so same thing i have mentioned here sd stand for the segment definition ld ld stand for the symbol which is defined in this program but it can be referenced by the other program that is variable our uh, that is kind that kind of variable is the result which is defined in our program but it can be utilized in the other program then er stand for the external reference it is defined in some other program but we are utilizing our program so you can see here some here it the sum is being mentioned with the ext rn and this sum you can utilize in the between part of this program which we have not shown but some variable not defined in this program but you can utilize it so if you want to utilize this variable it has to be utilized with by uh, declaring it as a ext rn here okay so then uh, also you can see uh, so the also the relative location of the main is shown that is starting from zero and its size is 36 the symbol result is locally defined and its relative address is the 32 the symbol sum is the externally reference okay then second kind of uh, object module which is produced by the assembler is nothing but the actual assemble program that is nothing but the machine language program okay so that actual assemble program here i have shown this portion of the object module contains the machine language instruction and data that were produced during the translation when the assembler does the translation of source program into the machine program it produces the second kind of object module that is called as the actual assemble program and and this actual assemble program is nothing but what it is your machine language program that is the machine language instruction and data so this is the second kind of object module third kind of object module that is produced by the assembler is what the relocation directory now you know in one of the functionality of the loader we have seen the loader need to perform the relocation also and in order to perform the relocation loader also need the some information from the assembler and that information is provided by the assembler in the form of this object module that is the relocation directory so what relocation directory contains here you can see relocation directory contains the entry for a different addresses that must be changed when the module is loaded into the main memory means what the relocation directory contains which are the addresses which need to be modified the different addresses which need to be modified or the different addresses which need to be changed the different addresses we need to be relocate that thing is contained by the relocation directory now you know the address is related with the different instruction or the procedure data etc etc so relocation directory contains the information about the addresses which need to be modified and in specifically relocation directory contain the following information what it contains the address of each operand that needs to be changed due to the relocation operand in the sense operand is nothing but your data address of particular data or the instruction that need to be changed when you are doing the relocation specific address of particular operand as a specific uh, address of particular uh, instruction or the data that need to be changed during the relocation then by what it is to be changed it means what if address of one particular operand is 101 and it need to be relocate then with what address in need it need to be relocate if its address is the 101 and if it cannot be executed from the 101 then from what it can be executed so apart from 101 then if it can be executed from the 105 then that has to be provided by the that has to be provided that information also contain in the relocation directory by what it is to be changed jar if jar tumhala jar te operand cha address change karaycha asel then what address need to be there in place of this 101 so that information has to be provided and using which operation this change can be done so this information also need to be performed so in case you can see the relocation directory contains this following information address of each operand that has to be changed by what address it has to be changed and which operation need to be performed in order to change that so this is the third object model which contain the information related to the relocation and last object model is nothing but the consider as the end object model which indicates the object model has been end okay so this is the simple one lastly which simply indicate the end of the object model okay so 
as we are, i have shown you initially the assembler has to give the different information to the loader so this five information we have seen now this five information is given to the loader with the help of these different object modules first object module esd second extra, uh, second is the actual assemble program third is the relocation directory and last is the end of object module so uh, uh, so with the help of this object module the assembler give the information to the loaders and then loader actually does the functioning of the allocation relocation and the loading etc etc okay so that's it uh, from this uh, uh, lecture on the loaders where we have seen the definition of loader types of the loader function of the loaders etc etc okay thank you all of you if you have any question you can put down in the comments i will definitely answer the all the questions regarding this concept thank you all of you